everyone and welcome to this fly tying video. Today we're going to tie in the gold head horse here. And here in device I have a new hook for me. So here I have the from Partridge the Grub Straight Eye. And this is size 10. It has a really wide gape but also this nice continuous bend with a straight eye. And I really find that these straight eyes give or have a nice look to them and also open up the gape even more so I really like them. The bead is a brass bead 3.3 mm in the color gold and to add a little bit more weight I'm going with lead free wire and this is the 0.015 and here I'm going to do a few turns about 7-8 or so and I'm just going to push this up inside the bead and before I do that I'm going to add a tiny drop of glue and this is going to secure this even more and push it up inside the bead and this wire is going to help in a few ways it's going to stabilize the bead and also add some weight and also help with the taper of the fly for the thread I'm using the 12 volt nano silk from Samplefly this one is in white and here I'm starting right behind the wire and here I'm starting right behind the wire putting down a little bit of thread and then I'm going to go straight back up to the bead and then back down again and this is to secure the wire even more so now it won't move anywhere and cut off the excess and this thread is so strong that it's even difficult to cut off with the scissors so this only proves how durable this one is this fly is going to be a quite classic horse hair I'm just going to change a few things the first one is to tie it on this grub hook instead of a straight one and here I'm going to tie in two ribs the first one is some holographic tinsel or unimiler this one is in the size medium and also some oval uni French. This is some oval tinsel in gold and this one is in the small size. So the first thing that's going in is the oval tinsel and when you cut these metallic threads make sure to use the inner part of your scissors or right here down the bottom. This way you won't damage the fine tips of your most likely very expensive scissors and then I'm going to tie this in on my way down and here we have to choose how long we want this fly to be and I like this to be a little bit down the band not too much but just to give a nice curve to the fly on our way up I'm going to tie in the other material this is the tinsel or the holographic miler and I'm just going to get the first one out of the way and then tying this in right at the same spot do a few turns and for now we're going to leave this here and as the name of the fly would suggest we also need some horse ear um, here I'm using the Horline dubbing the horse ear plus and this is some horse ear with some synthetic fibers mixed in with it just going to give a little bit more life to the fly and here I'm just going to dub on a little bit of this horse ear plus dubbing to make a not so thin dubbing noodle but we want to keep this not so tightly packed together as we're going to go through with the rib and also we're going to brush this out later and this is going to give the fly a whole new look and here if you're not tying with a camera a few centimeters from your fly you could do this in one go just add or add the whole dubbing at the same time but here I'm going to do this in two takes and so just a little bit more dubbing and I want this to be a little bit 
tapered as well, going from the back to the front and the body, I will stop it here right at the point of the hook. So as we tidy in the flat holographic tinsel at our latest, this is the one that's going on first. So with this I'm doing some open spiral turns through the dubbing and this is going to segment the fly and also trap a little bit of this dubbing making it stick out just in between the turns and then catch this material and a few turns and then cut this off then I'm going with the oval tinsel as well and here I'm going to go with this just in the back end of the previous tinsel and this is really not needed to do these two but I just like to add a little bit more effect on the fly or a little bit more life to it once we reach the thread with this wire as well just tie it off a few quite hard turns and then Come in with your scissors and cut it off at the bottom. A few more turns to tidy up. And now with a velcro I'm going to brush out these fibers a little bit more. And this dubbing is really spiky and has a lot of life to it. So it's a really great dubbing to use on all kinds of bugs and limbs. So there we have the body done and here if you would do it as simple as possible we could use the same dubbing for the thorax as well and, but here I want this to be a little bit darker so I'm going to use a little bit of darker dubbing but also some strands of peacock hurl so here I'm going to tie in two hurls and these you have to prep just a little so cut off the tips these are too weak to tie in and then one turn pull and then a few more turns to secure and now we're going to incorporate all this at the same time and what I'm going to do is to use the split thread technique and this is to insert the dubbing in between so what you do is to spin the bobbin counterclockwise and this is going to flatten the thread and it's going to allow you to split it in two and what I do is I take my little dubbing mix in between two of my fingers of my left hand and I keep the index finger in between the two parts of the thread keeping the loop open and then with my other hand I'm just going to grab a little bit of dubbing at a time and I'm going to insert it between the two threads and if you have a dubbing like this that is mostly rabbit it's quite easy to do and then I'm going to start spinning the bobbin clockwise again and this is going to core the thread and trap all the fibers in between and also make them stick out like this and then what I'm going to do is to also incorporate the pico curls at the same time so you just wind these through the dubbing onto the thread and I'm doing this counterclockwise and then I'm going to spin this just a little bit more and then slightly overlapping turns and for each one I'm going to pull all the fibers back and then once we run out of space we can then just unwind the beaker curls and tie these down just a few turns. What I like about this nano silk is that it's so thin even the 12 volt just sinks down right behind the bead and you won't have any thread color at all and this is exactly the look I'm going for with all my beadhead nymphs. And to secure this even more, I'm just going to add 
a tiny drop of glue onto the thread and this is a really neat way to get the glue inside the bead and then three turns pull tight and cut off and now the best thing to do is to just let the glue dry before brushing out the fibers but here I'm just going to brush these out a little bit and here I see I have one of the pico curls just a little bit too long so I'm going to cut these off and here as we use this technique of winding on the pico curl and the dubbing onto the thread you have no way of this just unwinding so it's a really durable fly and as this has both the bead and the wire inside it's very nice to have a durable fly so I like to have my flies as durable as possible if you spend a little time on it just making it a little bit more durable it will maybe last this little longer then it's always the risk that the leader will snap or anything like that but it's nice to have a durable fly at least you can count on that so there we have the gold head horse here thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already see you next time and happy time